Welcome to This Week in Hearing. I'm Sherry Eberts, co-author of Here and Beyond, Live Skillfully with Hearing Loss, and I'll be your host for this episode. Today, we're talking with two individuals who are looking to reshape the world of accessibility technologies for people who are deaf and hard of hearing. Paul Travers, the CEO of Luzix, and Monique Clark, the COO of Sign Glasses. Thank you both for being here to talk about your mission and to share more details about this new technology. Thanks for having us, Sherry. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Thank you. So as a person with hearing loss, I sometimes fantasize about having captions appear on the foreheads of every person that I meet. And I know Sign Glasses is not going to do exactly that. It does seem like the product is trying to replicate that experience a little bit. So... Can you please talk about the impetus behind the product? Monique, you want to go first? <laughs> okay, sure. Well, um, the reason why we started in Sign Glasses is because there was the need for accessibility. We tell a story about um, a student in BYU University and experiencing the planetarium and with the sign language interpreter, a live sign language interpreter on the stage. But you can imagine like looking up at the planetarium and then looking at the sign language interpreter, looking up again, you know, being lost and all that. It wasn't the best experience, right? So after that experience, sign glasses went and just interviewed a bunch of students and made sure that we, we got the, the gist of like what's needed for this accessibility. And then sign glasses was born. We don't only have, uh, you know, provide the accessibility through the glasses. We also have other softwares that can enhance students' learning or people in the workplace and things like that through our proprietary um, platform that we offer the services through. But um, I get really excited about what Sign Glasses offer. So I'll, I'll stop here and let Paul speak all about this amazing technology. Yeah, so the piece that we bring to the table is a wearable computing device that looks like a regular pair of glasses. And in fact, we have more newer ones even coming that I'm sure that sign glasses will support. One of them is the pair over here. And you can see that foggy looking guy in the back. <laughs> they look strikingly like a regular pair of glasses. And in fact, our newest pair, we call them the ultralights. And they look, wow. yeah. I mean, you can't distinguish them from a conventional pair of sunglasses. And what's nice about that is you can wear technology that doesn't make you look like you don't fit. You didn't just step out the Starship Enterprise kind of a thing, odd and weird. And and everybody, I don't care whether you're whether you're uh, a crazy person or whatever. People care about what they look like. And so, if you have these odd looking glasses like Hololens or Magic Leap or these big bulky things, people just won't use them. So these glasses, when you put them on, there's a computer in the temple and they can be connected to a network connection. And when you look into the glasses, just like the fighter pilot cockpit heads up display, but in this case, it's in the glasses. And so out in front of you is an image of whatever you want to put. And in the cases of sign glasses, they have a language, ASL sign language person that can be connected through the system so they don't have to now be in the classroom per se. You can have a camera and you can have a microphone in the classroom listening to the teacher. And then the sign glasses expert can be zooming into the student's view almost anywhere as if they were both sitting there in the classroom to do this. So it enables sign language in a very portable, personal way. And it makes it easier and more accessible for folks. I, I'm going to just say this, Minnie, because I thought it was so cool. I saw the video down at, uh, what's the name of the theme park down there? Universal Studios. Yeah, Universal Studios. And there's this little girl that's got the glasses on. And it just like is blowing her away. And she's putting her hands up. And she's, and I guess through the ride, she had a personal interpreter with her, right? Is that the concept of how that works? Yes, that is. And so you got that right. Um, it is for Universal Studios. We're in both Universal Studios here in the U.S. And that one is a post-production. So we can do live and post-production, right? And 
what that story, that experience is so near and dear to my heart because I'm a CODA, a child of deaf adults. So everyone in my family is deaf or hard of hearing. And so if we had these glasses, you know, say when I was growing up or when my parents were younger, they would have more opportunities. I can't tell you how the, these glasses, this technology, the accessibility that we're providing right now in partnership is changing people's lives, changing people's lives. Um, it's so many times people, I might be getting ahead of myself because I'm super excited about this, right? Sometimes <laughs> people put on these glasses and all oh, the reactions, like I need this right now everywhere. You know, or if I had this before or the tears that they they show of just being able to have this access. So you're right, Paul, we can have a sign language interpreter anywhere around the world to provide this remotely um, live or we can do this um, post-production like at the theme park. I mean, not only uh, sign language, we can do captioning as well. That's terrific. I, I imagine it's a very emotional for people when they're able to finally enjoy an experience in the best possible way, whether it's through the sign language or the captioning. You That's know how you first started this conversation, Sherry, was I can imagine someday written on people's foreheads, yeah. <laughs> captioning version of, of this does exactly that effectively, only it's next to the person or on top of their head based upon where you're looking, but the person's speaking and you're seeing in text, right? Money, exactly what they're saying. That's right. And for the little girl at Universal Studios, just thinking about this, she's of what, four or five years old. She was able to, and she doesn't read, right? She's so small, right? Put on these glasses and instantly have the language access, right? In her native language, in the sign, in sign language. And you could see her signing back to her mom about how kind of exciting it was that she was getting to do this. It was awesome to see. That's terrific. Well, we'll have to link to that video so our our viewers can take a look at that. It sounds terrific. So who is the, the, the customer for this product? Is it the person who's deaf or hard of hearing? Would they purchase it or is it the venue? You know, how does this product get to the end user? Yes. So we love to partner with, um, you know, if we're doing a university or if we're in the workplace or any organization or on a terrain museum. We like to partner with those who, um, the business owners or or the accessibility directors, those so that we can, they can sponsor the the deaf or hard of hearing or person with hearing loss, so so that they wouldn't you know be responsible for providing their own accessibility. You no, know, we like to partner with those who are decision makers, so that we can go in and again we don't only offer the the glasses. We pair that along with other services like. Um, a platform so that they can receive the services kind of like zoom or even lecture capture notes things like that so that the student can um be enhanced with their learning um process yeah. and is it all is it all in real time or is there ai an ai component to it because i know captioning can be done through cart or through ai i'm not sure if there's ai sign language interpreters yet but it's probably coming yes it is coming not yet. We're not there yet. Um, for us, I know there's a lot of AI uh, for automatic speech recognition out there and things like that. And um, for us, we right now, we like to focus on live captioning services. That's just because we want to make sure 100 percent accuracy. You know, there's lots of um, different there's lots of different things that can come in and interrupt the 100 percent accuracy there. And for for today, we just want to make sure that um, the person is receiving that message 100%. You know, there's accents, there's all these different things that can come in and interrupt that process. You know, in the sign glasses case, they offer so much more than just the basic, you know, we're pretty sure this is what they said <laughs> kind of a thing, right? And and with that, that extra services bring a lot of value on top of what just a basic pair of glasses that maybe had an AI engine running that was doing this. I will say that in the broader market sense, for people that have hearing aids that and they're just not working for them anymore. And there's going to come a day very, very soon where the glasses, you'll just put them on, they'll be tied through your phone and an AI service will run in the background in real, effectively real time. So for the lower hanging fruit and the broader base of folks that just need to have a way to hear, see here again, 
effectively, right? Because you're seeing what you would normally be hearing. Um, that, that's also coming right around the corner. So the ability to have these glasses as your personal translation or understanding tool is, is it's going to be ubiquitous. And the extra services that the sign glasses folks bring are just amazing because they, they offer it in places where higher learning right on through to entertainment venues. It's, it's a class above, I would suggest what these other services will be. So that sort of it raises the question about where are the um, the primary use cases for the device? Is it sort of education, entertainment, all of the above in a restaurant with friends? You know, what do you see as the main use case for this product? Well, well, I have an opinion about the glasses part of it. <laughs> so we did we did not actually build these glasses specifically for a sign language interpreter or interpretation or services. We built them as a, the future of computing. Computers started in a room that needed to be air conditioned, right? They're giant things that were like vaxes and these massive computers and they turned into your desktop, then they turned into your laptop, then your tablet, now your phone. And that is all moving to glasses. Look at Apple's new, uh, what do they call them? The uh, the pros, vision pros that are coming out. Uh, there's a ton of companies that are making and believe that the future of computing is in a pair of glasses. And we're convinced of that also because you can take the digital world and bring it into the real world. And sign glasses is effectively doing that, right? When they say post-process, they create these digital assets and then they push them to the glasses as events happen during the ride. So that, and that takes the digital world and it connects it to the real world. And that's what these glasses were designed to do. And today they're being used in the medical space for knee surgeries and shoulder surgeries and for um, medical uh, what the support staff like Medacta brings to the table, um, med techs and, you know, all those kinds of things. So there's probably not an hour of the day that goes by today that our glasses aren't being used in some operating theater somewhere. It's not the same pair as this pair. These are designed to be in the operating theater, but these glasses are also being used in warehouses for picking. They're picking and packing solutions. There's there's remote service and remote support. So they're basically the future of computing that sign glasses quickly came to the realization that they're the perfect vehicle to deliver their services over. So there's lots of places where they get used. It happens to be sign glasses is a leader in that market. That's right. That's right. Our mission is that um, any person with hearing loss, deaf, hard of hearing, be able to put these glasses on and get the accessibility anytime, anywhere. And so that speaks exactly what, what Paul is saying. That's a great vision, Monique. I love that. That is beautiful. So the use case is just ubiquitous. It's it's every use case that you could imagine. And there's many that you can't even imagine yet that yeah. you will see coming. Yes, that is true. So without getting too technical, can you talk a little bit about how the technology works? You know, is it different for sign language versus captioning or, you know, how do they work for, for both of those features? Yeah. So the classes have a computer in them. Okay. They got batteries in them. They got Wi-Fi connections in them. They're almost a phone, frankly, but you wear them. So the display screen, instead of being something that you look at and hold in your hand literally just floats out in front of you. And you can do many of the kinds of things that you could do with a phone today. You could cruise the internet with it. You can play games with it. You can do all these other things, but it's this phone device that you're wearing effectively. Mind you, it doesn't look like a phone clearly. And the way the display works is very unique optics technology that projects an image into a thin piece of glass. We call it a waveguide. And if you have you won't be able to tell what I'm talking about here, I don't think, but um, well, in any event, this lens that's in here looks like a regular lens, like Monique's glasses here. Um, but in this case, it has these little diffractive grading surface structures on them that allow you to project an image into it up here in the corner, bounces around inside, and when it gets in front of your eye, it projects it out in front of you in space where only you can see it. So the the core optics technology that allows them to work in glasses are these waveguides and display engines that Buzix is really specialized at doing. 
the rest of the technology that's in the glasses is basically coming right out of the phone industry and being integrated into the glasses. Um, so the technology that behind it, it's basically this thing being moved into this thing. And then once you get all this processing power in these glasses, you can do a ton of stuff with it. How do you manage like the depth of field situation? Because I haven't tried these particular glasses, but I've tried others in the past. And I felt like, you know, it was hard to sort of be looking at the person that I was talking to or whatever I was trying to consume in terms of entertainment and also read the captions at the same time because I was looking sort of at two different depths. Is that something that you have taken into account in this product? The pair that Monique uses today is designed with the images put about a meter and a half away from you from a focus perspective. Um, the pairs that we're doing, the newest pairs that we're doing are binocular, it's in both eyes, and you can place the imagery anywhere you want in space. We force the focus, again, to be about a meter and a half, two meters away. So it's literally, if you need reading glasses, you're okay because it's that far away. So you won't <laughs> need your reading glasses on with these things. Uh, that said, though, it feels like it belongs that far away. The pair that sunglasses uses is, is monocular. It's only in one eye. And so where the things can get, especially if you're not used to single eye use case, it takes a little bit of time to get used to the fact that it's only in one eye. And your eyes focus based upon two things, how far away the light really is and what the convergence of your eye is of what it's looking at. Because you're, you're, you know, your eyes are used to when they go in like this, oh, they pull the focus in. They're just those mechanisms have nothing to do with actually focusing. They have everything to do just with where the eye is and how the muscles have been trained to focus six inches away. And I was looking at my finger here and it's six inches away and my focus is trying to do close work. You don't get those cues as easily with what money has, which is why we put it at a meter and a half away, which makes it more comfortable for most users when they put it on. So what you feel or experience in a monocular style device, yes, it's it could be a challenge if you had the wrong one. I think ours does a better job than most <laughs> around this problem. In our binocular systems, you can put it where you want to. And so you you don't have that problem of, well, you do if the person's all the way down at the end of the, the theater, right? And you're here, the closed captioning will appear as if it's a meter and a half away from you over the top of people that are sitting in front of you. It won't feel like it's all the way down, you know, in the end of the theater where the, the person's talking is. So, you know, it's positional, I guess, is what, what else can I say? <laughs> uh, you, you did a beautiful job of explaining that. And how I would say that to um, deaf people who say, is the interpreter like right on my lens? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> my ball? right. And I'm like, no, no, no. It is projected. I say arm's length because people um, kind of kind of easier to tie that. Yeah, yeah. Arm's length is a fine way to describe it. Yep. Yeah. And so how we do that is um, if I, I say in the classroom, but really this can be anywhere, right? This can be in your workplace, at the theater, like you're mentioning, sorry, or at the planetarium or anywhere. Um, and we take a, a live audio feed and video feed and pr put that into the glasses. And it's um, about an arm's length that we like to say. Yeah. That's right. So Monique, can you share some of the feedback that you've gotten, you know, sort of the the positive things and if there's anything that users are saying, well, it'd be great if you could add on this feature or something that, you know, there's room for improvement. Yeah. I will say that I'm excited about this, the new glasses. I can't wait to just get my hands on those. They look just like, like Paul saying, they look just like these and I can't wait for those. So um, <laughs> some that's my own little throw out there, but um, some of the reactions that I see and again, I'm from a deaf family. So my brother and I and about five other members in our family can hear. Everyone else is either deaf or hard of hearing or later lost their hearing, right? And so when so it's really, really close to my heart when I see these reactions and put people put them on and you know, the screams, the in excitement, like, oh my gosh, wow, you know, and I'm getting these bumps just thinking about this right now. Hopefully I don't cry right now. But mm -hmm. I see a lot of tears, you know, and where is this? When can I have this right now? I need 10 of these. I want to go to the movies with this or 
I I was buying a house. I wish I had these glasses when I was buying a house or um, I'm at the doctor or anywhere. You know, the reactions are priceless. I wish I can record each and every one of them and, and show them. But the reactions you've seen at the um, on the video with the little girl at the, the amusement park at Universal Studios, that is just a glimpse of the reactions that I see on a daily basis when people put these on. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I can I can get this access anywhere. Like, I want to sleep with this. I want to wear this all day. You know, the reactions are priceless. I'm I'm holding my tears back right now. I just yeah don't want to <laughs> lose it on the on on here with you all. But it's just amazing. It sounds magical. That's that's yeah. really terrific. Definitely it's magical. I mean, the glasses bring something to the table that you don't you, you don't see every day of the week. To put a pair of glasses on where the image just can float out in front of you like that is in its own right. It's amazing. To deliver what the content that sign glasses is on top of it, it's just it's to me, it's a magical experience. When every time I look at, in our newest ones, especially with how small they are, it's like, you know, the technology is starting to just disappear. So when people put it on, they're pretty awestruck, it seems. Yeah. So where can people learn more about this um, so that, you know, our, our viewers can say, oh, I want to understand how this works. Where can they go to learn more about it? Well, for sign glasses, um, we can, I can give you all of the, um, we have social media pages and our website. We can give you all of that so that we can share that. You can just go to signglasses.com um, and get more information. I do want to hold up a pair of these glasses. This is what um, Paul was referring to. And I think you can see the, or maybe I can see with my eye, but can you see that, Paul, the square there? Yes, yeah, so you get it just right in the light. Of course, I know what I'm looking for. Yeah. The, the, the grading structures, the little tiny surface structures. When you're wearing them, you have no idea they're there. But if you look from afar and you get the light just right, you can sense that they're there, see them just yes. barely. Interesting. And these are so cool. I love these. And um, I'm just drooling over the pair that Paul's holding up. I'm just waiting for those, though. Yeah, I mean, you can see the temples are a little bit thinner. <laughs> I mean, these glasses are pretty cool. I mean, they, they all are. I mean, it's there's more processing power in the glasses that Monique has. But if you have a phone with these, they can do practically all the same things. So, um, so as do, from you a few need, do you need a phone? Do you need a phone to, um, to, to wear the glasses? Or no, the, the glasses can connect directly to the services they can connect directly through wi-fi they can use the phone if you want to tie them in through the phone that it's but unless you're doing something i i would suggest even when you in your theme park stuff they were connected over wi-fi or something in order to keep the sync and everything moving as it went through so you probably need a connection to something yes 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 and the way that we use them say i keep saying university but remember you can use them anywhere but the way we use them um, there, we do have our platform. So it's like a Zoom-like platform, right, where the person can put these glasses on and, and listen to the the interpreter can hear the audio feed and the, and see the video feed and receive the services that way. Um, so and we do have a mobile app also that we just um, launched that can also pair with the glasses and receive the services through that way as well. And want to learn more about Vuzix, it's Vuzix.com, the B-U-Z-I-X.com. Perfect. So any final comments or interesting things you guys would like to share? This has been a great discussion. If you have hearing impairment problems, can only recommend you check this out because if you're paying five to $8,000 for hearing aids and they don't work for you even, this is a great path to be on, frankly. It's, it's incredibly helpful. I've seen people with tears in their eyes when they're wearing the glasses because finally they don't have to work so hard to hear what's going on around them in a conversation. That's exactly right. I mean, I would say the same thing. Um, I, recently on our social media page, someone said, oh man, you know, I wish that my mom who's no longer here anymore had this, this access only if she were here, you know, I'm even in my own family saying, keep going more. This is why I'm here with sign glasses. This answers to my personal why, just to be able to have access to language anywhere 
any time. It is essential. It should not be an afterthought. It should be the first thing on people's mind is to provide an, an equitable, uh, equal access everywhere for, for language accessibility. So I know I'm really excited right now and I hope I didn't miss out a lot of things that I want to share with everybody, but please find out more about us at signglasses.com and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll share the all of the social media handles for you to, to learn more. Excellent. Well, thank you both. This was really a terrific discussion. I learned a lot and I'm sure our viewers will learn a lot as well. And I just want to thank you for your time and for sharing your experiences. And I wish you lots of continued success uh, success with sign glasses um, as well. And like you said, to learn more about them, you can visit signglasses.com. So thanks so much, Paul and Monique. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Sherry. Thank you so much.